Hey, everyone, and welcome to the Restore 7 State of the Kingdom address hosted by Johnny and Elizabeth Enloe. We are your flight crew for tonight, and I am Bobby Hobby from Eagle Mountain Apostolic Resource Center. This is Veronique Vaughn. Hello, everyone. And Hello. from our Kingdom <laughs> Learning Platform, Chris Banky. Hey, how's it going? Happy New, New Year. Year. I know, right? Happy New Year. Full of joy, <laughs> full of hope. Tonight, you are going to hear decrees that are literally going to shape society for the new era that we're in. We have many global leaders that are going to be speaking digitally tonight. They and many more will be a part of the RISE Summit, which is a live and digital event coming up March 26th and 27th. But before we just dive in, that new era actually begins with a global company of reformers being mobilized to shape society together. And that's why we believe the Holy Spirit has led you to tune in. <laughs> so God saved his best for last, and you know who you are. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Johnny and Elizabeth, talk to us about why it's so important to know what the state of the kingdom is right now. Well, thank you, Bobby. So good to see you and the team. Yeah, we're going from Nashville to Oregon, and we'll be going all over the place here. And we're excited about getting to uh, share here tonight. But speaking of the global community rise, reformers influencing society every day, just briefly from um, my standpoint, that is, uh, am I supposed to talk about that first or the state of the kingdom first? Just why we're we do, doing this We tonight. do all the planning the and then I just, I just go off script anyway, you know. <laughs> so state of the kingdom tonight, you know, it's obviously December 31st, the last day of 2020. Wow, what a year. And as we go into the new year, it is just so important to get a prophetic perspective and particularly one infused with hope. And we believe that's what will come out of tonight's, uh, tonight's words that are shared. And so excited to hear from um, our friends, our prophetic friends, and many that you know as well. And it's, it's going to be uh, really something to help set us for the year. Yeah, I think it's so important that we steer our hearts intentionally going into this new year. And um, there's something about hearing other people's perspective and what God's been speaking to them that just confirms, hopefully, what God's already been speaking to each of your hearts. And um, as you're preparing your heart to go into the new and embrace what God is doing, this just sets us in the right in the right tone for the year. And it's going to be an amazing night. It's, it's going to be no fluff. It's really just going to be uh, pure awesomeness and revelation <laughs> and anointing and and we know the Lord is here. We can feel his presence. The Holy Spirit's here. And we hope you can feel it as well. It's true. In fact, I would encourage you to consider grabbing something to take some notes on. We're not going to do any deep, uh, long teachings at all. But I just know that when God speaks fresh revelation, there's um, something in us that needs to hang on to it. And I believe God's going to give each one of you some really key words for the night that are for you personally and also for us collectively, but the ones especially that are personal, it's so important to record those and then refer back to them throughout the year. So good. There we go. Awesome. Well, we are so excited to be able to have this opportunity to do this with you guys. It's been great working with you in the preparation for all of this. And, and we actually want to do um, something right from the beginning that is a little bit different than a lot of these, you know, summits and a lot of these um, videos like this. We're going to do something interactive. So right off, we're going to start with an interactive tool where you're going to get to tell us where you're coming from. We think it's important to understand from a, a biblical perspective and just to be able to understand the footprint print of the reach that what God's doing with this right here. So basically what you need to do is you need to go to the website, should be on the lower third of your screen, menti.com, and put in the number there. Also, if you're following us on Facebook and you're watching, like, let's say on your phone, and it's the only device that you have, don't go to that website because it'll tune you away from the broadcast. Instead, put your uh, city that you're from, the region that you're from, just put that in the comments. We're going to communicate with each other that way. And if you do have the ability to open another tab or a separate device or on your computer, then go to the, the screen, go to the uh, web address, menti.com, and put in the number 1239243. In the Facebook comments, there'll actually be a link there. There should be a link, so you can just click on that. And that is going to allow us to actually watch real time as we all populate a screen that we're going to get to see here in a second where we're all coming from all over the world. It's really important that we do that because God's truth covers the world tonight as we together 
speak over our regions. You're going to get a chance to do that later, and that's what Johnny and Elizabeth are all about. It's all about community, so we wanted to get you involved right now. So make sure you get set up, mentimeter.com. Go there, enter that number, and tell us where you're from, and once you get familiar with it, you're going to use that to prophesy over your region later. It's going to be phenomenal. One of the things that's uh, amazing about something like this is we really are coming from all over the world, real time. This is a live broadcast. Johnny and Elizabeth are across the country in the U.S. We're here in Bend, Oregon in the U.S. We're all coming, and people are watching from all over the world. We're actually simulcasting this into Facebook pages from a lot of the thought leaders that you're going to hear tonight. And we've got a lot coming up. We've got speakers, um, thought leaders that are have amazing words for you. We're going to be going into those later, but Right now, we want to look and see how the uh, Menti is populating. You can see right now people are coming in here. We've got people from, look, Cincinnati, Charlotte, Somerville, Los Angeles. Those look like the biggest. Jacksonville, yeah, yeah. Florida. Sacramento. Nice. Amazing. This is crazy. So right now, real time, as you guys are putting in your cities, this is populating in Hello. real time. New Zealand. Welcome, everyone. Hello, New Zealand. <laughs> Amazing. Look at that. Look at, Look at it resorting. I like how Bend is represented pretty well, though. Oh, Austin, Texas Tulsa. is rising. Yeah, it's that's amazing. Nashville. Yeah. <laughs> you know what's amazing about this is this is this is a little bit of a tiny little insight of to what it's like for God because he actually sees all of us at yeah, the nice. same time simultaneously. Amazing? And it's hard for us to picture that, but yeah. this actually, this screen redrawing itself is is actually an interesting picture of yeah. the real-time reality of the whole world. Yeah. All, it's all happening right now. It's literally <laughs> every tribe and tongue just yeah. coming together. This is so cool, you guys. This you could is be so sitting in your vehicle watching something all by yourself, but look, you are not alone. You're not alone. alone. You're not alone. We are a oh, tribe. We are so family. It's so exciting. <laughs> well, as you continue to populate and let us know where you're from, you're going to see this global community come together and we want you to pay attention to your region again and what God may be saying to you. It's not just about hearing from some of our amazing speakers tonight, but it's also about you hearing from the Holy Spirit and shaping the narrative over what God's saying over the entire globe. We'll get to do that together. So, Chris, let's go to James. Our first speaker Mr. is James Gull. Gull. Let's hear, let's hear from James. You know, it's time for the hope solutionist to arise. The verse that the Holy Spirit has given to me for this new era and for the new ways for the new days in this entire new, not just new decade, but the new ways for the new era is found in Daniel chapter 12 in verse 3, where it reads, those who have insight will shine brightly like the brightness of the expanse of heaven and those who lead the many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. In these days in which we live, there will be an increase of problems, difficult times, where there are no earthly solutions. But that backdrop is a great backdrop for the bright and the shining ones to come forth. I call them the hope solutionist. And they will shine brightly and they will have great insight that the world does not have. But bring insight into the world to bring solutions to the world and the world will say, joy to the world, the hope solutionist have come. Well, hope solutionists, I absolutely love that. I mean, I know there's been a lot of times in my life where 
I should have been a hope solutionist, and I wasn't. But it's such a refreshing, relevant word for right now. I Absolutely. Like I also feel like, um, you know, he was saying it, it's dark times, you know, and sometimes right. we can let the darkness dictate what we're speaking into and just that great encouragement to let the shining from the Lord, from us, shine into the darkness because now is our time. So exciting. I love it. That's what hope does. It actually becomes tangible and creates solutions. That's right. Now let's watch this amazing video by Steve Schultz. Hey, God gave me a really important word for 2021 for you and for myself. As, as a matter of fact, this happened yesterday. It was sort of an encounter somewhere between a dream and a wake state. I was in a big building with my wife. It was like a conference was going on. And people were handing out headsets, headphones, to different people in the crowd. Maybe a third of the people, maybe half the people got headsets and the others didn't. And I asked the woman who was handing these private headsets, these really fancy ones. I said, why are we getting these? And the moment I said that, I heard through the headset, the Father, Father God spoke, and he said, I just want to tell you how much I love you. And he said my name. And I said, but Lord, you love everybody the same. Why am I having this private headset? He said, I only do, I'm only interested in telling this right now to people who are interested in hearing it. And I was startled by that. And he began to show me that I had dedicated time all the time. For me, it's in the middle of the night. I dedicate time in the middle of the night. Other people, it's in the mornings. Uh, other people, it's when they're driving. Because I dedicate time to him, I'm telling him I want to hear from you. So he is giving in 2021 the, the equivalent of private headsets where we can hear him very clearly. But the condition is, You've got to show them that you want to hear from them, and you'll do that by spending private time. Sometime every day, spend private time with him so he knows you want to hear from him. And that's your word for 2021. Private time with the Lord. What a great encouragement, you guys. Absolutely. Powerful. It's so important. I think I love that analogy of us having our own little ear sets, you know. Just hooking up me and the Lord, drowning everything else out. I think that's key. Yeah. I think it's it's one of those things that people are always talking about this, you know, my quiet time and things like that. It can get a little, um, I don't know, like not enough weight on the importance of actually having that time where you're really communicating with God. And, and that's where we're going to find the hope and, and when things don't make sense. Like that's the time, right? Right. Right, and when we take that purposeful time, we're actually giving the Lord space to speak His heart into us. That's just amazing. The stream of revelation that's being released right now on the yeah. planet, we're going to want to spend time yeah. with Him. Absolutely. It's literally beginning to rain. Absolutely. Amazing. All right, so we have Nate Johnston up next. All right, Let's give that a listen. A few weeks ago, I had this vision, and in this vision, I'm just seeing the Lord gathering, and he's gathering all these different elements for something he's creating. And I saw conflict and chaos and accusation and slander and warfare and torment and all these different elements that, you know, many of you have been through in 2020. And, and it was like he was gathering them together. And I began to look and, and, and see what he was doing and he was forging and fashioning this, this beautiful hammer, this beautiful war hammer. And I said, Lord, what is that? And he said, these are my people that I've been fashioning through the chaos and the conflict. And now they're about to emerge as my war hammers that will be used in the earth. There will be my reformational hammers that will go into all areas of society and begin to break down and confront areas of bondage and and just where people are being in captivity. And see, maybe right now you're like, well, I've only experienced all these things. I've not seen, I've not felt like I've been effective. I've not felt activated in anything. But this is what I want to encourage you in. You've only experienced the warfare so far. You've seen what's happened to you, but you've not yet seen how God's going to move through you. And in 2021, I want you to be aware that God has been fashioning you. He used a year of absolute crazy conflict to fashion you into a warhammer. 
He awoke you in ways that you could not have been awoken in any other season, in any other time of history. He awoke you in a time that should have broke you. And I feel like right now the Lord is wanting you to shift into that mindset. He's wanting you to step out of the defeat, out of this, the grave clothes of 2020, all the stuff you've been wearing, all of the, the different words and judgments that have come against you. He wants you to step out of that and just begin to realize that he's been forging you and fashioning you into a mighty weapon of war. Get ready, body of Christ. Get ready, people of God, because this is your Isaiah 60 season to arise and shine. Happy New Year's. Wow. War hammers. I love the war hammer. Isn't that great? It's fashioned. You can feel it (laughs) on that. Yes. And for those people who feel like, oh, nothing's happened in the season. I don't see it. What's going on? Something's been taking place. We're being fashioned. Yeah. I think sometimes when you're sitting back saying nothing's happening, nothing is happening. I think it very could be, especially after hearing Nate, we're a war hammer ready to be used. Yeah. And we're not we're not allowing ourselves to be used, right? Right. Oh. Forged in the fire for yeah. a time to shine Absolutely. like never been seen before <laughs> Isaiah 6. And time is now. Absolutely. Time is now. Amen. Which takes us perfectly into uh what we want to talk about next, which is um this idea of uh you know being forged into this war hammer. You know, there's a conference coming up I hear about called Rise Summit. (laughs) So Johnny and Elizabeth, there's this conference coming up in March. We're so excited to be partnering with you guys on that. But can you tell us, uh, just at a high level, what is the purpose of the conference called Rise Summit? Um, And and what's the purpose behind it? Let's start with that. Are we on? All right, there we go. You're on, you're on. I have to make a comment on those first three prophetic words. Uh, uh, Steve Schultz, James Gall, and Nate Johnson. Those are all amazing. And it's, a, and it's really, they, they, uh, I hadn't heard them ahead of time. And those are going right in, into what is this RISE conference that we're talking about. RISE stands for Reformers Influencing Society Every Day. It's not a conference. I have to interrupt you. Uh, this not is conference. not a conference. Yeah, I gotta get to it's a summit. It's a summit. It's a summit. That is different conference you've ever been to. Summit, Sorry. I'm glad you corrected that. Summit's what happens at the top of a mountain anyway. It's right for every every reason imaginable. It's the right way to do it. I was just so much into what they were just saying. You know, yeah. James was talking about hope solutionists. Yeah. That's what reformers are for. And then there was Steve Schultz, the headsets. We got to get these headsets. We got to hear the personal instructions from the Lord for ourselves. And he loves us, but he loves society. And there are answers and solutions coming that way. And then Nate Johnson, the, the Reformation hammers and setting people free and reforming things that need to be reformed in society. And so we're going to see as never before, we're awakening to it already, but the awakening is really going to be fast forward in 2021 to the need for us as the body of Christ to take our place, not just, you know, having good meetings in the four walls of the church, but in every area of society and being there representing the King, bringing his solutions into every area of society. So good. I would say it this way. Um, The rise summit purpose is, for us to uh, hear a clarion call for reformers in the mountains to rise, to take up everything we've been fashioned for, we're going to move forward with. And that's why I've been adamant about not calling this a conference, because Mm -hmm. we believe this is the launch of something that God's already been putting into motion. Um, We're just acknowledging it. And it's an opportunity for us to, really give the body of Christ a gift. And the gift is um, a community, a global community of reformers. We, God gave us a mandate many years ago to awaken, equip, and connect reformers. Those who follow Christ, who know what he cares about and want to show up and prove that he actually cares about the things we care about with tangible solutions. Bobby, you said it. You said that Um, hope is something tangible and it produces solutions. And so we've been all growing this muscle of hope for years now, but even more so in this last year. So now we're ready, all of us, not, not just people that you typically look at to be leaders in the body of Christ. God has positioned every single one of us in a strategic place uh, of influence to bring tangible solutions from an overflow of the hope that we have been forced to dig down deep for. Hmm. Yeah. 
And just quickly on that, that dig down deep, you know, deeper hope is cultivated in the midst of contradiction. And I think that's a lot of what we've experienced here in 2020. And so there is a, the, the, the depth of level of hope that we've, our roots, that we've, the tap roots, how far they've had to go down are key for us now stepping into this rise. Wow. It's so important wow. to not have shallow roots, right? Like yeah. it's so important, Absolutely. so important. So I want to talk about this conf- this not conference, this summit. <laughs> See, I was doing really good. I was calling it a summit, but Johnny threw me off. <laughs> this summit. So um, this is going to be very interactive. It's going to be dynamic. We're going to have an incredible uh, roster of speakers. Um, all of the guys that you're hearing on this New Year's Eve event will also be speakers at the Rise Summit, as well as a whole bunch more. It's going to be a very, very um, amazing group of thought leaders from a lot of different walks of life and from all over the world. So we're very excited about that. It's in person, but it's kind of a backstage in person. So we have a very limited number of in-person tickets. And then it's going to be digital. But this isn't just a, you know, put a camera up at the back of the room. This is being designed. Um, we're designing this with the Enlows from the very beginning to be an incredible experience online so that nothing gets in the way of the content that's being taught. So we're very excited about that. You have an opportunity right now today. There's The prices are discounted. We're just now uh, announcing this and launching it. The prices are discounted. And for everybody that registers in the next 24 hours, not only are the prices discounted, but they're also going to get one of Johnny's eBooks as well for free. So we're really excited about that. Um, if again, you can register, there should be links in Facebook. You can register right now. But again, if you're watching on your cell phone, do not turn away yet and register. You can register at the end of this event because we have so much more amazing content to get to. So speaking of that, we have another incredible speaker that I'm excited to hear from, and that is Benny Johnson. So let's hear from Benny Johnson. Hi, my name is Benny Johnson, and I want to wish you all a happy new year. And I mean that sincerely. We are at the end of 2020, and we are all wondering what God is up to. Well, some of us know. Um, Several years ago, I was talking to God one day, and I said, God, what are you doing? And he just said, I've got this. And I have been living on those small words, short words, for a really long time. And he still has got this. And for 2021, we have so much hope. This has been the most challenging year. But at the same time, it has been the most wonderful year. Many of us have drawn closer to the Lord. We've had more time to spend with him. And this right here, the word of God, is alive and active. And I want to read to you one little portion out of John. And though his creative inspiration, this living expression made all things, for nothing has existence apart from him. A fountain of life was in him. And for his life is the light of all humanity. And this light never fails to shine through darkness. Isn't that great? And this light never fails to shine through the darkness, light that darkness could not overcome. We are in great darkness, but there is a great light, and God is shining on this world. And I want you to look forward to 2021. It's going to be an amazing adventure with Him. God bless you. Wow, that was just amazing. Thank you, Benny. You know, I love the way Holy Spirit is just tying this all together. No one knew what anyone else was talking about, but wow, it's just amazing. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. And as we move forward, I just, I feel that amazing sense of hope just yeah. kind of being threaded in. I don't know if you guys can feel Yeah, absolutely. And I think another thing, too, is a lot of times, you know, we feel we read a verse like that and we feel like it's not true, but we know that it is true. And so that's really on us to, to realize, hey, God has provided this for us and we just need to step into it. I know that, you know, when you go through really dark times, sometimes it's easy to get discouraged. But like Benny said, it's our opportunity in 2021 to look at 2021 with hope and encouragement. Absolutely. These plans are being unfolded to us Come right on. now. Right. We can look into Absolutely. the book. 
It's yeah. so and that's what's exciting. happening. That's why the prophetic is so powerful. <laughs> yes. It should be exciting. To lead yes. the it should be. So that's what we're doing. Amazing. I know you're all super excited to go to this next video by Bill Johnson. Hey, this is Bill Johnson from Bethel Church here, Redding, California. My goodness, Happy New Year. Happy, Happy New Year. We're so uh, thankful for the privilege to be able to just kind of give words of hope. And, and the reason is you can't read the scripture and see that God always has an answer for every dilemma and not be encouraged. He gives promises. He gives uh, testimony. All these things are filled throughout our lives and throughout the Bible just to give us hope for every situation. God right now at this moment has an answer in his mind for every single problem that we face. It doesn't matter if it's personal. It doesn't matter if it's ecological, political, economic. It doesn't matter what it is. He has an answer in mind. And those answers have been set aside for his people. That's you and that's me. And we have the privilege to seek him and to look for those secrets, those mysteries, those promises. I feel like if we can be a people filled with hope for this next year, we can actually help to bring about the change that we ache for, that we long for. The problem is never on God's end of the equation. It's always on our end. What are we going to do with what he said? What are we going to do with what he has given to us? One thought, uh, final thought. Uh, the Apostle Paul gave uh, a word to Timothy uh, that was pretty strong in 1 Timothy chapter 1. He told him, fight with the prophecies given to you. In other words, there's an obstacle between where you are and where God intends us to be, and it takes proper use of the promises to get us into that place of our destiny. I believe that's necessary for 2021. We're going to see God invade situations sovereignly, but we're also going to see him respond to our faithful use of promises. I encourage you with that, and I pray that this next year is the greatest single year of your life. Bless you. Wow, what an amazing word by Bill. I love that. And I love that the Lord is speaking and reminding us that he has solutions for every problem that yeah. we face on the planet. Yeah. That's right. Absolutely. I mean, there's all these times where you're like, I don't know what the solution is. I don't know how to get past this. I, And God has a solution. And a lot of times, I know in my personal life, it's often I'm just not even asking. Yes. I'm just trying to figure it out on my own, and that's and we're that's so filled with hope, we actually become the solution for the people around. Wow. Oh, come on. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic. Okay, so we're going to move into another uh, interactive session. So we set this up with where in the world, uh, what region of the world we're coming from, and now we're going to move into the next piece. So there should be some instructions on the screen. It's actually the very same link as before. Go there and uh, menti.com and then put in the code 1239243. should be on the screen. There should be a link in the Facebook as well. And again, I'm going to remind you again, I'm going to keep reminding you, if you're watching this on, the, on your cell phone and you don't have any other device, put the same information that Bobby's going to talk about in just a second into the comments. Don't click away because we don't want you to miss any of these amazing speakers. But if you do have a separate tab or something like that, pop over to Menti. Put in the code 1239243. Bobby? Okay, so this is where we all get to interact as a family. <laughs> the heaven and the heaven of heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth he's given to men. So what region do you want to prophesy over? Is it the region that you're living in, the place that God's put you, that post that you want to shape the future by what comes out of your mouth there? This is that time. We know that this is the platform that Johnny and Elizabeth run in is that let's cause global reformers to arise and decree things that are not as though they are. There's never been a time better to shape the narrative than now. And so you... Uh, how, this is how it works. You enter in the region. No, the three words. You enter in the three words that you're going to speak over your region. Maybe it's hope. Maybe it's um, deliverance. Maybe it is unity. I feel like some of you are right now hearing from the Holy Spirit. There's this power presence, you know, all of these words that are coming yeah. to you right now. Just go ahead and enter those in. What are the words? Again, three words. Pick them. Let the Holy Spirit speak to you that are shaping the region that you're watching from right now. 
All right, as that's happening, put in the words as, as the Holy Spirit gives them to you. We're going to show that on the screen as soon as it starts populating, and you will be able to see these. Wow, look at that. Deliverance, revival, hope, peace. Justice. Wow. That is incredible. You guys, this is these are the words that the Holy Spirit is giving you to the people all over the earth. Because mm. remember the last slide that we did? You remember all the cities from yeah. all over the world? Yeah. Yes. Those cities are populating this with yeah. the words. Look at that. It looks like hope is the number one right now. Right. Yeah. And just as in the beginning of the world, the Lord spoke the word and the world was formed. I'm looking at all of these words just being spoken out over our regions wow. with the creative uh, you know, behind it, just healing, bringing restoration, righteousness, repentance, breakthrough, growth, just like, bah, 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 yes, bah, bah. it's beautiful. Wow. Yes, peace. I want to see what those little tiny words are. <laughs> I know, right? There's some little words out there <laughs> faith, this unity, look at deliverance and justice. Oh, is look at that awakening. You're actually creating the future of those mm. regions right now by healing, what you're prophesying. Boldness, Freedom, leadership, come on, glory. Right? You're wow. doing amazing. This is absolutely amazing. Yes, righteousness, healing. Holiness, holy fire. Yes, Lord. <laughs> okay, keep populating that. If you're on <laughs> Facebook only and you're watching this, know that we're uh, uh, watching what you're putting in the comments also. So it's really cool to be able to join together and do this together as, as one uh, group of believers. It's really amazing. Um, we we'll want to talk about an uh, offer that we have, which is, we mentioned this, this book, um, Becoming a Superhero that Johnny uh, wrote. We have an ebook. It is it's a fantastic book, and we actually have an offer right now tonight only for the next 24 hours. So I guess it's not tonight only. It's for the next 24 <laughs> hours. <laughs> if you go to the link that's on the screen right now, it should also be in your uh, Facebook feed. If you go to that, and again, I'm going to say it again. If you're on Facebook only, don't click away. We don't want you to miss any of these speakers. This link will remain active for 24 hours. But if you go there, you can get a free uh, digital download version of this book. And I definitely recommend that you wow. do that. It's really, it's a really op awesome opportunity. Wow. So, um, again, you also get that book if you register for the RISE conference. So either way, you can get your hands on a copy of that book, which is such a cool gift from the NLOs to be able to Absolutely. offer that to everyone. But like, like so many things, it's only for the next 24 hours. So as soon as this is over, make sure and do that. And um, we've got some more amazing speakers to get to. Yes. So, Veronique, yes. you've got to announce Thank you. I somebody do. cool. I have the privilege of introducing another father and equipper of the bride. Let's take a listen to what Bobby Harvey has to say. <laughs> Hey everyone, this is Bobby Hobby from Eagle Mountain. I'm so excited to be a part of Johnny and Elizabeth Enloe's State of the Kingdom address. Listen, the State of the Kingdom is glorious. We needed a shakeup so that we could wake up. We have been forged in the fire to operate from our spirit at a whole new level. It's like the time in John 6 where the body of Christ had seen a mighty miracle of feeding the 5,000, but only a remnant were hungry enough to cross over to the other side to actually experience the bread of life himself. We are crossing over into new dimensions of sight, new dimensions of possibilities in the kingdom. I know it feels like the enemy has set traps for us. But I promise you, Haman will be caught in his own trap. That's what the Lord says. It's like the time in Esther where he set traps for her but ended up caught in the gallows himself. You will emerge from this season with favor. This is an hour where apostolic influence is making the church have a complete, entirely new definition of how the world views her. We're coming to the world with solutions that solves its most pressing problems. Remember the Bible says, as in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. What if that's not just about levels of darkness, but what if it's about levels of reformers who are placed on the planet during times of darkness to shape the world and release on the planet things that have never happened before? The eight people who entered the ark needed to be saved, but those same eight people who exited the ark were ready to start a brand new civilization. This is an hour of hope. Be blessed. The state of the kingdom is good. Happy New Year. Wow. 
that guy, Bobby, that guy, that guy's a genius. I know him. <laughs> <laughs> no, all, all joking aside, hour of hope. I, it is amazing to see how all of these thought leaders from all over the, of the nation are coming together. They don't know what they were each talking about, but the Holy Spirit's weaving through all of their messages, this, this consistent message. And I think it's right. very powerful. I loved what you said about the hour of hope. It's very powerful. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Johnny and Elizabeth have been trumpeting this word for years. There are reformers that are literally happening on the planet that have solutions that will turn the world's heads as to why we're hearing from heaven. We will solve the problems that this world faces because of the Lord. Amen. Well, here's another message of hope and powerful encouragement from Tim Sheets. Holy Spirit spoke to me when he downloaded revelation concerning angels many years ago, this statement. He said, I am coming to lead another campaign for King Jesus. Only this time I will be bringing far more of the angel armies. And then he said this, the greatest days in church history are not in your past. They are in your present and in your future. I believe we are now entering into the greatest days of church history. Awesome times are before us. And yet there is aggression from hell that is that is fighting. But we are told the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And we are in that time when the greatest days of church history and the great church of Jesus Christ is going to rise and it is going to tear down strongholds. We live in a day of awesome hope as our king anoints us to prevail. That's what he said in Matthew 16, verse 18 and 19. I will build a church and I will anoint that church to prevail. We are moving into a time when we are going to win great victories for King Jesus. Think about this. Two-thirds of the Godhead came to planet Earth about 2,000 years ago. Jesus came to be our Savior. Holy Spirit came to empower us and empower the heirs to extend the kingdom of God on the earth. We know this. Two-thirds of the Godhead did not come to Earth to lose. We are not going to lose. The heirs are going to win. And this is a year... When we win big victories for King Jesus. Two thirds of the Godhead did come not on. come wow. to this earth <laughs> to lose. I, I mean, come that on. says it all, right? Yeah, right. He was talking about it, the anointing and the empowerment. I just sat here listening, thinking, oh, my word, how blessed are we to be able to hear this stuff yeah. right here? This is like getting our foot right, our footing right as we come into the new year. Yeah. Shucks, guys. This is so blessed. (laughs) The greatest days of church history are right now, he said. Yeah, I think I think it's easy to to slip into this, you know, kind of ho hum. Oh, it seems like things are so bad. But you just listen to the wisdom of of these speakers and you realize, really, we have only hope to look forward to. Totally. And and. And even woven through the difficultness of 2020 has been incredible blessing. And and if we stop and kind of take a different perspective and look at it, we can see it. I I failed to find anyone that can't find incredible blessings that have come from it. Even if it's just forcing ourselves to look towards the Father instead of at ourselves all the time. Yeah, God's fashioning his bride, the great bride. Absolutely. Well... Listen up for this one. Kat Kerr is next. So uh, get your listening ears on because you're not going to want to miss what she has to say. Hello, my name is Revelator Kat Kerr, and I'm here to give a statement on the New Year's State of the Kingdom Address. Thank you so much for Elizabeth and Johnny Enloe for inviting me and all those others who will have a part in this. God is reforming this country and his body to be great for him to rule and reign with him and to bring new things from heaven to this earth this is a great time to be alive i want to encourage you keep going forward i'm serious 
your birth was timed on the earth to be a part of this. If you've ever wondered, does that mean me? If you're alive and breathing and you belong to the body of Christ, we mean you. We have authority over all the darkness, so don't let that mess with you. Okay, we're supposed to crush and push it back. In these days, the manifested sons and daughters will be walking on this earth, speaking to the land, the sea, and the air. Make sure you position yourself by spending time with Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the Father to hear what their heart is for this time. They do have a plan, and I want God's will, God's way in my life. I hope you feel the same way. It's time to love more than ever before, but also to be dangerous against hell. That is my hobby. I hope to speak to you later when they have the Rise Summit in March 26th to the 27th. You'll hear more about that later, but right now the state of the kingdom is doing good. God loves you. He chose you. He positioned you, and he's going to bless you for walking and running in your race with him and for him. Because we have nothing without him. It is about Jesus Christ. He is our King. He is our Savior. He is our Lord. I hope you know what his will is this day. Be blessed. And I will speak to you later. Wow. This is just so encouraging to hear from Kat Kerr. One of the things she said is just such a good reminder. We have the authority over the darkness. It's just so good to remember that. It's very easy to forget, but it's so good to remember that. Yeah. We're so excited to now go to the host of this State of the Kingdom event. Let's hear live from Johnny and Elizabeth Enloe. Hey, guys. Hey, wow. This has been so powerful. And amazing, I, amazing. Can't, I can't take notes fast enough um, to just chew on later. I think I'm going to have to go back and watch a couple of those over again Definitely. and we so appreciate the team there we appreciate our friends um, that have taken the time to give their voice to the state of the kingdom address tonight and i'm just going to add my part and then johnny's going to add his part and then we'll basically be done for the evening so this is about to wind up um i'm going to talk fast uh i have several things that the Lord highlighted for me as I was preparing for tonight. And one is that he reminded me of, of two things that we have experienced in a rare, rare way this year um, as the body of Christ and just collectively as society. And one of them is the obvious, this whole pandemic thing and being shut in and not knowing what's going on. And then the, the issues with the election and all of that has been something we've all uh, experienced collectively. Mm -hmm. Something else that we experienced collectively that could have easily just um, been forgotten and swept away by, by most of us is um, something that I, I don't say this lightly. I don't know um, the worship leader, Callie, um, I think her last name is Higginthal, but her maiden name is what's on her Instagram. Help Hillel. I meant to ask somebody how to say that right, but um, she is a worship leader at Bethel. And in December of last year, um, she and her husband lost their little girl. Um, she she died when she was, I think, two years old in December. And they did something that is absolutely stunning. That was so unexpected that caused all of us who heard about it, which I'm. I, I will be shocked if any of you hadn't heard about it, but this little girl, Olive, um, was so loved not only by her family, but, the, but by the community there at Bethel. And the, the parents said, you know what, we, we know that our God uh, raises the dead and that he does not take our suffering and our trauma lightly. And so they pressed into God and they asked for her resurrection. In fact, the community there locally came around them and they worshiped almost 24 seven, maybe even 24 seven. I wasn't there, so I don't know firsthand, but I know from what I was exposed to that they worshiped hours and hours and hours for literally a week, just contending for the nature and the character of God that they knew to be good and kind and loving and powerful to manifest um, on their behalf. And, and, um, I was at first I was shocked that they were pressing in like that 
and, and being so faithful and contending. And then I became shocked that she wasn't raised from the dead. And I, I would suspect that many of us felt that way. I know that people literally all over the globe were praying and worshiping and fasting with them. And God spoke to me at the time and he said, I, I want you to follow Callie and I, I want you to pay attention to how she experiences this year. And I was a worship leader, so I have a special love in my heart for worship leaders. And I, I believe that worship leaders, especially those who are prophetic and who write uh, prophetic songs, um, lyrics really from the throne room, they they are a part of what we learned about in Psalms, which is that Judah goes first. And when there's a battle, Judah goes first. The worshipers lead the way. And I believe that, um, you know, obviously it's a very personal, personal experience for that family, what they went through and what they continue to go through. But it also became very, um, very global to the body of Christ, the way that we experienced this and contended with them. And I believe something, something shifted and happened in our hearts through experiencing that with them that caused us to allow our, um, our hope muscle to be exercised in a way that we would need it to be strong to go through what we're going through right now in our nation and really, really globally. Yeah. And um, God just spoke to me through that and he said that, uh, let me just look at my notes so I don't miss this. He said that that her name was really key. Olive Elaine, who obviously is happy and, and content and with the father right now. So we don't grieve for her. We grieve for her family. Um, but her name, the meaning of her name is Victorious Awakening. Victorious Awakening. And uh, there's something that happens in the spirit realm when we expect God to be who we think he is, who scripture shows us that he is over and over and over again. And, you know, muscle in, the, in our physical bodies is built by something, by our muscle tissue actually tearing and ripping. There's a, there's a breaking that happens when we are contending for something that we cannot yet see with our natural eyes. And this year has been so um, difficult for so many in in the relational side of things too, because the things that we're contending for and we're believing God for, and that we're believing just to be true about our government, about President Trump, about what God wants to do in the nations, um, there's so much contradiction in the natural. We haven't yet seen the breakthrough that we're expecting in so many areas. Maybe some of you were hit really hard financially this year, um, maybe in relationships in terms of just people maybe that you don't know people that maybe you do know that that frankly just think you're crazy they think we're crazy for believing like we believe they think we're 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 we've lost it because we're contending for something that seems so opposite of what is available so i just want to encourage you and say that this is a time where um god has prepared us something unique happened with Callie as a worship leader, right uh, previous to her her daughter going to heaven, um, she wrote two worship albums, prophetic worship albums, that basically are all about how to deal with trauma. And she said that these worship songs literally became the thing that her other daughter um, was sustained on, has been sustained on this year as, as she's needed her mother's voice in her life. And when she hasn't been able to even at times find words to minister to her daughter, who's grieving with her over the loss of her sister, the worship has sustained her. And so I believe that God has already put a song, not only in our worship leaders for where we're headed, but he's put those songs in our heart. He's been singing over each of us for where we're headed. And he's been very intentional with our hearts. Um, Lisa Bevere said something that I, that I ran across today. And it was so powerful. I'm, I'm not saying this word for word. But the gist of it was, you know, the church has wanted the truth without love. The church has wanted the truth without love. But the world has wanted love without the truth. 
And the Lord, the Holy Spirit is, is bringing us into a year where we are going to marry truth with love and love with truth, where we're going to so walk in both that we, um, that, that as Bobby was saying in his short message there, that, um, we're going to have a, a, a new definition mm-hmm. of how the world views the church mm-hmm. because we're going to s- insist not just on truth, but also on love. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there's a dependence, an utter dependence that we need to have in the Lord um, as we transition into this new year. And that utter dependence will allow us to moment by moment um, access wisdom to know in any given situation with any given person, what is love supposed to look like? Because love isn't always squishy. Love doesn't always tell us what we want to hear. Love doesn't always um Love doesn't ignore the truth. And yet if we try to just give the world truth apart from a pure hearted motivation that's rooted in love, then why would they even want to hear the truth? I know I I can be with the man that I love more than anything. And if he has something to tell me in a moment that's true, but I don't feel loved by him, I don't care to hear his truth, <laughs> you know? So how much it's more true. so is it with, with us and, and those that the Lord is rescuing right now? And he's not just rescuing victims. He is rescuing victimizers, those who have partnered with evil. And they were so broken that they find them, found themselves partnering with evil. So we're going to have opportunities to continue to cry out for justice and to also cry out for mercy. And I will close with this. Psalm 81 um, goes with the new uh, Hebrew calendar year that we will step into in September of this this next year, 5781. So Psalm 81, there's a key scripture in there that says, um, you called in trouble and I delivered you. I answered you in the secret place of thunder. I tested you at the waters of Meribah. Well, Quickly, the waters of Meribah for Moses was a testing point for him. And that's where he got so angry with the people that he didn't do exactly what God asked him to do. And I believe God's going to ask some things of us this year, but it's going to be key that we pass the test of love, that we choose love. It's one thing for God to have righteous anger um, and to deliver consequences for sin and for evil. That's actually an expression of his love. But it's another thing when we allow ourselves to to look at someone that's been used by the enemy and be angry with them and not angry with the enemy that has deceived them. It's a time where we must choose love. That's good. So good. All of that. Well, you know, the state of the kingdom The atmosphere of the kingdom right now is roaring justice and raging hope. That was actually my word to start the year, uh, 2020. I said 2020, a year of roaring justice and raging hope. And uh, the first verse, I was looking back at my prophetic word even earlier today. And first, the verse I put there was Job 20 and verses 5 and 27. It says, the mirth of the wicked is brief. The joy of the godless lasts but a moment. The heavens will expose his guilt. The earth will rise up against him. Then I talked right after that about 2 Chronicles 20, that 2 Chronicles 20, 20 would be a reality. Believe the prophets and you will prosper. You know, believe the Lord and you'll be established. But the whole storyline of 2 Chronicles 20 was about Jehoshaphat and the children of Judah being surrounded by enemies. So many enemies, they didn't even have a battle plan. It was like, oh my goodness, God better help us. And, uh, We should have known that was going to be a scenario for us in 2020 as well. If he's talking, if he's ever going to highlight the scripture 2020 and a battle plan, a strategy from the Lord, it had to do with being surrounded by so many enemies. It was the Ammonites, the Moabites, the Neonites. And whether we talk about COVID-19 or we talk about rioting or election or fraud or all kinds of things that have taken place this year, we can see it's been so many, so many different armies that it has been where we've had to really run to the Lord. 
And I know we, we, we continue to put the, the word out. We got to pray. We got to pray. But I've never heard of more prayer taking place in the United States as this year and millions around the world. Millions in China are praying for us. You know, the prayers are out there because of it. And there is a reality similar to Second Chronicles 20 where, you know, the word of the Lord was, do not be discouraged by this mighty army. That's what Jehaziel saw. And Jehaziel means he who sees the Lord. And so there was something about seeing the Lord in it. Do not be discouraged by this mighty army. We've been surrounded. We're still in the midst of it, it seems like some aspect of it, a mighty army. And, an, uh, you know, uh, really um, evil intentions of the enemy, a wrong reset. There's God's reset or Satan's reset. He's trying to override God reset with his reset. He's not going to. God's reset's going to win in this whole thing. It's going to knock out the fake reset. And uh, so we're, we've done our part. We've showed up at the battlefield. We're, we're calling who we need to call. We're praying. We're praising. Uh, the battle is the Lord's. And so this is what the year began in. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, where the Lord began to take me is Psalms uh, 21. Last year, I did also highlight at some point during the year Psalm 20 as something from the Lord. And of course, Psalm 20, the first four words are in times of trouble. In times of trouble, may the Lord answer your cry. That should have give us, given us a little idea that uh, this, this year that had so many promises attached to it was uh, maybe going to be, you know, an, an, an awesome present that's in a brown paper bag, so to speak. And so may the name of the God of Jacob help save you from all harm. And he goes on to speak in that. And may the Lord look upon your, verse four. May he grant your heart's desires and make all of your plans succeed. There's all these may he, may he, may he, depending on what version of the Bible. I happen to be reading this out of the NLT. May the Lord answer all your prayers. And, um, and so this was uh, in verse six. There it was key for last year. Now I know that the Lord rescues his anointed king. There was, that was a prophetic word I gave. It was a year of rescue. And so rescue is awesome in some ways, but we're seeing that which you're being rescued from is not so, it's not so fun in, in the midst of it. But really the word I have for uh, 2021, just briefly as, as we head into there, uh, first of all, I have a little, um, here's, I'll, I'll say it, I'll have to say this twice. In 2021, we will see that 2021. <laughs> W-O-N. Yes, so we'll have to slow that down for you. In 2021, as in 2021, we will see that 2021, W-O-N. And we're going to see that there was a whole lot more accomplished than we imagined. There's an amazing movie that wasn't all accomplished in 2020. It has its finishing part in 2021, and we're going to see that 2020 won in 2021. And it really goes with that Joshua 2020 storyline. And as you know, it ended up with, you know, uh, an amazing, incredible victory. The enemy took themselves out. I believe that's what's taking place in our own nation in so many ways. I'm going to mention, you know, so many of these others that we've had speak ahead of time. They've been strongly defending uh, who God has placed as leader in our nation, President Trump and the election. And they have heard from God. And just almost every one of those voices has, uh, has been out there uh, strongly on that. And this also relates to that. Uh, I believe we're going to see an amazing set of uh, events, surprises from God, help from God. Uh, for those who can see prophetically, you've already, you've, already, you've already seen it. We've seen God laughing in heaven at the enemy in his plots and plans against him. But if you look at now Psalms 21 and think of it as a continuation of Psalm 20, and that's what I want to end with. How the king rejoices in your strength, O Lord. He shouts with joy because you give him victory. So there was may the Lord. There was always may the Lord, may the Lord, may the Lord in 20. But in 21, how the king rejoices. He's speaking of himself, King David. I think there's an application even for the assignment President Trump has. This is not a political statement at all. It's just recognizing the Lord does use individuals and he anoints individuals. And there is a Cyrus anointing. There's an actual anointing on him to do a certain job. And when it says he shouts with joy because you give him victory. That word victory is amazing because in the Hebrew, it's the word Yeshua. And they could have literally put salvation, victory, or deliverance. May the Lord give that to you. For you have given him his heart's desire. Remember, we read in verse 4 of 20, may he grant you your heart's desire. And then in verse 2 of 21, for you have given him his heart's desire. You have held nothing he requested. 
And again, I think these are words for our president at this time and through him for us, because that's what it's all about. It's us and the nations by extension. Verse three, you welcomed him back with success and prosperity. You welcomed him back with success and prosperity. We are going to see that play out in a very practical way Come in on. our government from the very top. You so placed good. a crown of finest gold on his head. He asked you to preserve his life and you granted his request. The days of his life stretch on. Okay, verse five. Your victory brings him great honor. Your victory, and that word victory again, Yeshua. Could have been salvation, could have been deliverance. And you have closed him with splendor and majesty. So be encouraged. I'm not going to go any more into it for time's sake. But Psalm 21, go ahead and, and, and read that and be encouraged by what the Lord is saying for us in the United States at this at time. Verse 7, you know, for the king trusts in the Lord. The unfailing love of the Most High will keep him from stumbling. And then the verse 8, the justice component. We talked about last year being the exposed. But we find out, you know, it doesn't quite scratch the itch just to be exposed for things to be exposed. The heavens will expose. We saw that. That's part of uh, uh, Job chapter 20. And so expose, expose, expose. But all of a sudden, we, you know, the unfinished part of expose, something needs to be done about what was exposed. And a little bit's been done about it. But the justice component of it has to come around now. Verse eight, you will capture all your enemies. Your strong right hand will seize all who hate you. And it goes into speaking. Again, we don't have to apply all of it natural for us, but it goes into a description of justice and really the Lord being involved. The Lord will consume them in his anger. Fire will devour them. And I know we don't like hearing that, but that is a, a part of it. Verse 11, although they plot against you, their evil schemes will never succeed. Although they plot against you, their evil schemes will never succeed. They will turn and run. Then last verse 13, rise up, O Lord, in all your power. With music and singing, we will celebrate your mighty acts. And I believe we're going to have some amazing songs of victory come out in 2021 that speak into this news, this the finishing of the, the big story God was telling. It, what we were hoping it was all going to be said and done in 2020. We are seeing the evidence was the exposure, but it takes the 21 uh, aspect of it to finish it. In 2021, we will see that 2020 one. <laughs> Yay. Wow. That's so good. <laughs> wow, that. you guys, such words of life it's right amazing. there. Promise, they give you clarity for what you've been through. Mm -hmm. They they don't they don't get around the hard things. They speak directly to it yeah. and they give purpose and yeah. life for what God's doing. This yeah. has been tremendous. Judah is going forth, just upping the necessity in the body of Christ to yeah. write songs of hope and praise. New, let's just prophesy that right. new songs right. are being birthed right now out yes. of the ashes wow. that yes. this is happening. Truth and love. I love that uh, Elizabeth brought that out. And then also justice and mercy. And mm. then Johnny uh, echoed that by saying roaring justice <laughs> and raging hope. So yeah, good. That is so That's powerful. just the, you so can powerful. feel the passion of the right. Lord in that. Absolutely. You can feel the extreme right. of the Lord in that. Talk about empowering heirs. Yeah. Exactly. My word. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's, you guys, it's been so amazing to have that. Um, before everybody tunes away, we want to talk about um, this uh uh, event coming up in March. Um, but I don't want anybody to tune out right now because we're going to ask Johnny and Elizabeth to pray over the nations. So you definitely want to stay tuned for that. Just a couple more minutes. But right now, I want to talk for another minute or two with you guys about this conference coming up in March. I know we mentioned it earlier on um, in the first third of the program tonight, but I want to come back to that because I feel like, especially after hearing all of these messages, it makes it very, very clear why this conference in March, the Rise Summit, and, and Elizabeth, I realize I just said conference three times. <laughs> so it's the summit. The summit in March uh, um, is so important. Um, and the speakers have really been echoing this message that you guys have for this thing. So can you talk for just a couple more minutes about the importance of this and why you've got this set out and, and why we're doing it in March? Absolutely. Um we have been, our Restore 7 team has been working for a couple of years now, and y'all might have gotten tired of us saying, it's coming, it's coming, but we have built the most amazing app, Rise app, that is going to facilitate this global community of reformers. 
I think we need it now more than ever. And so being a part of the, uh, the event in March, that is our time where we're going to launch the app and those that uh, connect with each other at that time. It's just the beginning of a whole um, community, a reforming community where we can together enjoy relationship as we're advancing the kingdom of God together. Um, I will also say that the reason why I'm so adamant about calling it an event versus a conference, we really want to do something like you said, Chris, that's very interactive. I think we've all been to many, many conferences. We've spoken at many, many conferences where we talk for a very long time and give people a lot of information, a lot of revelation. And, you know, we, you can only absorb so much, even when you're hungry spiritually, you can only absorb so much. And we're, we're ready to get to the meat of it and let you take it and run with it and hear from those that are actually on the front lines already bringing solutions, already partnering with God so that those who carry influence in the same areas can glean from each other. So this first RISE Summit is going to do something really unique. We're going to have RISE Talks, and those will be power-packed 20 minutes. You got a little taste of that tonight in that, you know, it's amazing what someone can say in two minutes. It's really <laughs> right. powerful. Right. Yeah. Um, so we're going to do a lot of rise talks. You're going to be able to hear from quite a, quite a few many people. They'll be longer than two minutes. They'll be 20 minute rise talks. Um, similar to what you've probably seen before, like Ted talks. So also that's just a taste of what's to come with future rise events where we plan on filling those spots, those rise talks, not with names you've heard of, but with people that, like I said, are already, reformers on the front lines in education, in arts and entertainment, in media, in government. We want to have you hear from your peers and be able to learn from each other best practices and what God's actually doing and saying in those specific arenas in our society. Yeah, I think too, um, I, I love that you're wanting to call it a summit and I love that it's different. It's one of the reasons that we're so excited to partner with you. This is a very interactive, and I said this at the very beginning, but it's true. This is being designed right from the ground up to be an interactive online experience. You, there'll be opportunities to actually even do networking with other other people. The events are going to be interactive, much like this was tonight. It's not just a conference with a camera at the back because we've got COVID and we have to like have a camera at the back. It's not like that. It's very interactive and purposeful. And it's filled with these thought leaders that are coming together as one voice behind what you guys are talking about. Johnny, I'd love to hear from you on, on this event in March. If you could just take one minute and, and give us your thoughts as well. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it too. Yeah, well, that's uh, just to uh, go along with what Elizabeth said. I think this, this app is going to be huge for connecting people that's a tool there because, uh, again, we don't want to just talk about things like reformation and transformation and nations and all this stuff. And it just be, you know, 30,000 feet up. We want to be able to land it and connect people. And so this app is going to be an amazing tool for it. And then I think Which we'll make available during that event. That will be made available yeah. then. And then these, these rise talks on an ongoing way, they're going to be, you know, with sources of... Uh, of information of how reformers are already doing it in different places, whether you can re rep reproduce it exactly in your town or city or nation or not, some version of it, it will, it will stimulate uh, thought. So we really believe in landing this whole reformation message. And the Lord really has created the perfect storm for this to be a message that is uh, desired as never before. And we understand, you know, I love re revival is never bad, never wrong. But we have to understand revival, we, the end game for revival, we have seen it as souls getting saved. And revival, the end game is so that we can be appropriately salting and lighting the world, as Jesus said in his very first message. You are the salt of the earth. If you don't salt the earth, it's going to rot and then trample on you. You are the light of the world. Wow. If you don't produce that light, there's going to be darkness. There's going to be consequences. So we get revived so that we can then show up with all these things that we've been hearing uh, you know, the answers. Uh, I remember uh, Bill Johnson was talking about all the answers and, and the, uh, the solutions, uh, the solution is that James was in this word after word after word in that. So that's what we're about. Wow. That is 
so exciting. Like I mentioned, we're very excited to partner with you guys to facilitate that. And remember, right now for the next 24 hours, we've got uh, discounts on the registration. There's two registrations. This conference designed from the ground up to be digital. So don't feel like if you can't come to Bend that you're going to get a second class experience. It's going to be amazing. There's also a in-person uh, registration as well. So pick between one of those. The in-person is very limited and it will be more like a backstage feel. These speakers are coming to us from all over the world for this summit. So it's, um, it's, it's, very, it's very cool. We're really looking forward to it. We appreciate so much the time that you guys have poured into it, and I'm really looking forward to hearing from all of these Rise talks. Um, I mean, a lot can be said in a 20 minutes, and from the thought leaders that I see, the people that are coming on to be speakers here, it's going to be absolutely fantastic. With the revelation and impartation that God's releasing right now, you can feel it. You just know you want to be a part of it, so don't right. miss it. Johnny and Elizabeth, there's... Reformers all across the globe who are watching tonight. They have prophesied over their region. They've entered in with us. We've had an hour of power, definitely. It's been phenomenal. And I just feel like it would be amazing to have you guys just as a, as a father and a mother just release over the Reformers who in the nations of the world right now are saying, yes, this is me. Something's touched my heart tonight, and I want to be ignited in a fresh new way. Would you just pray over the nations tonight with us? Absolutely. Uh, we're, we're just really grateful for um, every single person who's been a part of this, or maybe you're watching it afterwards. And it is always an honor to have an opportunity to be a voice in your life, to, to, to have these other speakers who have been a voice in your life tonight. And we don't take that lightly. Um, I also want to just quickly again, thank the team there in Bend, Oregon. And it is um, in their church there where you are tonight, where yes. we're going to be hosting the Rise Summit in March. That'll be amazing. And the name of the church is Eagles Nest, right? Yes. I think it is. Eagle Mountain. It's Eagle, Eagle Mountain. Eagle Mountain. It's Eagle where Mountain. the Eagle Nest is. That's right. Yes. Eagle Mountain. And anyway, so Johnny and I and some of our Restore 7 team will be there in March. And we would love for anyone who wants to come and be personal together. Um, that would be awesome. But it's going to be great either way. They'll have to, you know, limited, limited the number. The limited yeah, number, yes. yeah. Okay. So as my part of praying over you guys, I actually want to just declare um, something over you. Then Johnny's going to actually pray and blow his shofar. He's, he's got the, the big yeah. gun tonight. Uh, the declaration that I want to make over you and just, you know, wherever you are right now, I just want to encourage you to just close your eyes and just receive this and let this just hit that mark in your heart that might be a little weary from all that we've been through, yeah. all you've been contending for. Um, any places of disappointment, let, let these words just come from Holy Spirit and bring uh, refreshing and life into those places of your heart. First, I will say that the kingdom of God is always only ever increasing. And you, by your very makeup and nature, are connected to the kingdom of God. So you are always only ever increasing. No matter how it feels, no matter what it looks like, you have been moving forward. It is said that of the increase of his government, his better ways, there will be no end. His government is ruling and reigning in the nations, in your nation, wherever you are right now. His government is ruling and reigning and there will be no end to his advancing kingdom in your nation. And I declare over you that you are connected to him and his kingdom and you will always only ever advance as well. This is a year that you will sit with him. You will learn to be loved by him and you will overflow with the love that he has loved you with. You will stay soft. You will stay trusting. You will let go of every offense as it comes. You will let go of any remnants of skepticism. You will insist on dead things coming to life because that is who your God is. 
Awesome. Yes. So I'm basically going to blow the shofar. Now, for years, that was really what I was known ministerially for. I think I would be invited to blow the shofar at the end of the meeting because miracles would happen when I would blow the shofar. And people would have lungs replaced, hearts replaced, kidneys. They would tell us about them later. All kinds of supernatural stuff. I could keep you for hours on that. And so I felt like the Lord said he was going to release the, the miraculous. Even tonight, we're going into the new year, kicking in the new year. And there is something, you know, about this is the Trump, the, the biblical Trump. And whether it's the year of Jubilee, only way they knew it was a year of Jubilee is when the sound of the Trump was sounded all over the land. And that was the announcement of the year of Jubilee. And then it says in Psalm 47, 5, I believe, God has gone up with the sound of the Trump. We know that also the walls of Jericho came down when there was a shout, the blowing of the trump. We know Gideon had the victory with the sound of the trump. There is this thing about a sound of heaven that is released that does stuff. Yeah. Even the book of Acts, Acts 2, it says there was a sound that came from heaven. And so, you know, this is not the most, I, I mean, a shofar doesn't really bring a melodious sound. It's something totally supernatural. It is, it is something that God does. But I want to invite you. Uh, I'm going to stand and just blow this. And if you have a, you know, whatever your area of primary need is, if it is a physical, just put your hand wherever that is and believe God for a supernatural touch. And, you know, if your wallet needs healing, pull out your wallet or your purse and put your hand on that. If it's a relational thing, uh, if you got a ring that's tied into that relationship, put your hand on that. Some connector there and just release, uh, release what you have to the Lord. Empty yourself of you. And be prepared to receive whatever he has for you at this time. And I believe it's it's going to be uh, it's going to be good. Amen. So. Father, we just welcome your presence. We expose everything that we are to everything that you are right now. And we just allow our our physical and our spiritual and our emotional being to resonate with the sound of heaven. Oh. Thank you, Lord. Woo! Happy New Year! <laughs> yes, Lord. We receive that, and all over the globe, those wow. of you watching, thank you so much for joining us. What Hasn't this been tremendous? This has been incredible. And Absolutely. what just, just amazing. a, just to wet your thank whistle you, for the you. March Summit. Right. So... Guys, thank you for joining us. And on behalf of Johnny and Elizabeth and the Restore 7 team and us here at Eagle Mountain Kingdom Learning Platform, thanks so much for thank joining. You. It's been great to partner with you. Johnny and Elizabeth, we love you so much. Thanks for fathering and doing yes. what you and mothering and doing what you guys do so well all over the planet. Yes. We love you and we thank you for yes, thank the you. voice that God's given you. Thank you. Oh, we love you too. And happy new year to everybody. Happy yes. New thank year. you. Bro. Yeah. Oh, we're amazing. And yes, happy new year to everyone. We'll see y'all hopefully in March. Join us. Happy new year. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining.